Hi, my name is Stephanie and today I want to talk to you about some dumb autism studies. <laughs> Thank you patrons for voting on this video topic. And real quickly, I would like to shout out my autism isn't a dirty word merch. I have like my thing all messed up. You can get this design in hoodies and other types of shirt things as well as others at the link in my description for my merch shop. Now to begin this I also want to let you know that this was intended to be more like haha look how stupid things people like focus on about autism and then it kind of got to like more annoying things so I apologize for that but we're gonna begin with the apparent obsession with whether autistic people are capable of driving. To be fair autism does affect a lot of things and it could possibly affect how we drive and how we function while we drive. The fact that we are autistic while driving, just like we're autistic while doing anything else. Some types of statistics that I might be interested in seeing is like, you know, how the average autistic person, whether they do drive and what time of their life they get a driver's license and if they don't, why? So like for me, I didn't have my driver's license until I was 18, even though I got my learner's permit the very year that I was allowed to. However, it tends to be that most of these studies kind of seem to almost be aiming at a way to like make autistic people more dangerous on the road statistically or through studies. One study suggests that there were more rare dangerous occurrences in the driving simulation test that they did with autistic people versus non-autistic people. Do know that this was under stressful circumstances. Something this study kind of passively mentions is the fact that the autistic drivers were those who had learner's permits and the non-autistic drivers had a driver's licenses, even though the autistic people were older than the non-autistic people, we still see people who have passed a driving test and probably have experience on the road with a driver's license versus people who only have a learner's permit. The study also points out that there seems to be a slower reaction to steering but not to braking in autistic people. Another study specifically focusing on parent responses and their experiences with their autistic child driving specifically pointed out that the parents reported that their autistic child did not feel that their autism significantly affected their driving and their ability to do so. Somehow the study concludes that this makes autistic people more dangerous on the road because they don't feel that autism significantly affects their ability to drive. One thing that's kind of useful is that multitasking skills aren't really great in autistic people while they're driving. Of course, we kind of already know that <laughs> multitasking tends to not be a strong point in autistic individuals, so there's that. And interestingly, they didn't find really any significant issue with like motor skills or decision making skills versus the control groups, which is kind of a neat thing to find out, especially because we might theorize it might be more difficult for an autistic person, but that's not what they found in their study. Now, there was a thing that came up, I think it was like a year or two ago in the UK, where I guess they were wanting autistic people to be identified on their driver's licenses, and I guess there was some sort of implication that autistic people might not be allowed to like have a driver's license until an assessment was made or something like that and it, it did cause a huge ruckus obviously for good reason and my favorite thing was seeing people respond and saying if only there was a test that people could take to prove that they were competent and capable of driving like a driver's test. <laughs> I just think it's really weird that people are trying to treat autistic people differently in this situation when everyone has to take the same driver's test with the same standards to be able to pass. So why would a person who passed a driver's license test not be capable of driving just because they're autistic. And there was a very recent pilot study done in April of 2020 of which I could only get my hands on an excerpt of that basically looked at things like anxiety responses while driving. The study basically says that autistic people show more anxiety-like traits or symptoms or whatever while driving than non-autistic people and it's like no duh because <laughs> anxiety tends to be a hallmark of 
autism. It's extremely commonly comorbid. Uh, no, duh! <laughs> like, what? But then I have to ask, if you're trying to use that to make autistic people somehow more dangerous drivers, wouldn't you have to regard anyone with anxiety to be also more dangerous behind the wheel? Now moving on to the next one. We have a study based on <laughs> proving that autistic people have more masculine facial features. Yep, somebody paid money to statistically determine through some form of research that people with ASD have more masculine facial features. So, now to limit variables in this study, they made sure that all the people who were subjects were Caucasian. So they did find in their study that people with autism or autistic people do tend to trend toward either more masculine in males or less feminine in females. Now the one actually kind of interesting, possibly useful thing that came out of this study was that they noticed that the more masculine that a person's features were according to the algorithm, the more they had trouble with social communication. Now this actually makes me wonder if they have stumbled across something genetic that in Caucasian people who are considered more masculine by an algorithm, they might all have a certain gene that might make them look a certain way that also contributes to more significant issues in the social communication arena. I don't know. So that is something that I think might be worth looking into, but the idea that someone was like, hey, I want to do a study where we decide that for sure, indeed, people with autism, yeah, they, they look more like masculine, so you could, yeah, I, I need 3D imaging for this too, so. And then we move on to the last one, which kind of, I don't know if we want to call it research necessarily. It's like an article based off of what would be considered like a research paper. I think it's more of a research paper than it is necessarily a study. And honestly, it just seems a little more insulting than anything else. And kind of just a weird way to look at people, in my opinion. This article suggests that autistic people are simply less domesticated human beings. Now, I personally am not a fan of comparison <laughs> towards other animals when it comes to human beings, and the reason for that is because I feel like that kind of very quickly turns into eugenic-like conversations because it was the comparison of human beings to animals that really led down that road and that kind of ideology. So it just, in general, makes me uncomfortable. But the idea of saying like, oh, autistic people are just less domesticated humans, it really lends to the idea of oh, autistic people are less worthy, they are defective, they're not like us. Like, that, that's the feeling I get from that, and it's just, it feels really insulting and kind of a weird take to go with for an entire paper and then subsequently an article. Now, the paper is written in very academic language. So it was kind of difficult for me to follow a lot of the times, so just admittedly, but there is a lot of use of seemingly and theorize that does kind of make me feel like a lot of it's kind of their headcanon theory that has very little evidence to support it because they're going like, we can assume from here that it seems like this, so if this seems like that and then this seems like that and we can theorize this, like when you're on a really long string of theoreticals and seems likes, usually you're running into some sort of issue that you can't kind of prove. If I'm interpreting what they're trying to say correctly, I think what they're trying to say is that Autistic people are like part of the evolution of the human race to like the next step or whatever in our evolution. And the reason they say this is because they feel that like when new things are being created for the evolutionary process that they're weaker and more susceptible to damage and that those new things like caused damage in autistic people. <laughs> so we're like suffering for the evolution of the human race or something weird like that. And then I guess that would lead to the concept of us being less domesticated because I guess in the process 
the most like the the in-betweens or something are theorized to be less domesticated and then they also like compared it to some animals and how like certain animals have these features and then like the more do domesticated ones have these and I just it just makes me feel gross it kind of suggests the idea of feral which a lot of people tend to think like autistic people are just like gonna be feral if you don't like control them down to the, like the little bits or whatever and uh, it just makes me feel gross I don't like this one at all. Now with all of these studies all the information I'm talking about etc there are reference links in the description as always when I'm talking about something that is not just like personal experience and stuff like that. I leave links for you to look to whether it's where I got my sources or even just for further reading and resources etc. So you can find all of that in my description box. Feel free to check these out. I think some of these are DOI numbers instead of just links. That's because I have access to EBSCOhost right now through my school and if I were to link you it wouldn't actually link you to anything because you don't have an account with my school. You can find it through the DOI number if you search that in Google. I'm interested if you think that's what they're saying in those articles and research papers. I believe those ones are direct links. If I'm interpreting things wrong, let me know. I'm interested if you think that it is more of a compliment to be considered less domesticated or whatnot. Just let me know. What are your thoughts on these studies? I thought it'd be kind of fun to just compile some like what kind of moments for us to go over in a video. And also I wanted to shout out Anne Mehmet on Twitter. I'm going to also link her Twitter in the description box. She tends to kind of do commentary on a lot of autism research that comes out and highlights things about certain studies and stuff like that and often brings things to my attention that I want to look into. So if you enjoy that kind of thing, you'll probably like following her on Twitter. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and like the video, please. <laughs> and let me know your thoughts about everything in the comments below. If you enjoy autism related videos by me, you can hit the subscribe button. I upload to this channel every Thursday at 4 p.m. Central Standard Time. Thank you to my patrons for supporting me through Patreon and a special thank you to my spaz tier patron, Brian Kleinhammer. I hope you're having a wonderful week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!